Being caught in a rain shower when you're on a, on a ride on the street is a nightmare. Getting caught in two thunderstorms is a disaster. Many years ago, I was riding on the Oregon coast, leaving from Portland and went through two thunderstorms. I ended up finding a laundromat, walked in, asked the manager if she had a towel in Lost and Found, because I was about to get naked and throw all my clothes in the dryer. She produced a rather large smile and said, most certainly I have a towel, carry on, which I did. <laughs> So rain riding can be quite devastating to your enjoyment on the road. The worst part about that is it's unpredictable. Especially if you're going on longer rides of three to four hundred miles. You may start in 80 degree weather and you may end up in 50 degrees and pouring rain. So the problem with that on the street or the road is that how do you deal with it? So the first easiest thing you can do is look at tire pressure. So if your tire is a street tire, most of the time today, street tires, not hypersport, but street tires, have tread that goes from the center of the tire all the way out to the edges. So that as you ride and it picks up water, it ejects it from both sides very important piece of information there the tire has pressure therefore it has shape so the contact patch is small you hit water it ejects it both sides of that canal now if you have grooves that do not go center to edge then obviously that groove is going to trap the water so do you add more tire pressure? Wait a minute. Do you add more tire pressure to increase the sharpness of the profile of the tire, therefore giving those tread patterns more angle so that it has less chance of trapping the water and therefore creating an aquaplaning condition? Yeah, you're going to have to think about that for a minute. So depending on the tread pattern you have, tire pressure and changing it right there and then is something you can do very easily and quickly. The question is, do you increase tire pressure because the grooves are not going from center to edge so that you decrease the risk of aquaplaning? Or if you have grooves from center to edge, do you decrease it to just put a larger contact patch on the ground knowing that the water is going to be moved quickly by the tread pattern on both sides. Something else that you can do very very quickly every toolkit comes with a screwdriver you can back off compression and rebound quite a ways to soften up the hydraulics on the bike itself that makes things a little bit better in that you're going to go a lot slower, obviously, in the wet. If you're going slower, then you need softer suspension. A flat blade screwdriver or a three or a four millimeter Allen can do that in seconds. And you could do it under a bridge on the freeway. You can pull off under some trees. There's a lot of ways you can do this quickly, especially if you know and can see that you're going to be in rain for a while. Is that too much to ask? No, I don't think so. What will be better yet if you have the tools and if your OEM toolkit supplies you with such things is your ability to change fork preload and that would be a 5mm Allen or a socket, which would be 14, 17, 19, or 22 millimeters. Or do you have the ability to change and soften the preload in the rear shock? Whether that be via a manual preload adjuster, a ramp style adjuster, and those generally have a tool in the toolkit, or two lock rings, and then you need to have put the tools you need into the bike for that purpose. Are you just going to suck it up and ride through the rain and slow way down and keep the settings the same for tire pressure, preload, and 
hydraulics. What are you going to do? Well, if it looks like you're in a brief shower and you're going to be out the other side real quick, why bother? I can see that. And in actual fact, I've done that myself. If you're going to be in a lot of rain for a long time, I will definitely change my tire pressure. I will definitely change the hydraulics. And based on what I've got into the bike, and usually it's a road bike, so it's pretty soft, I might change preload on the forks and the shock. All of that is for me to be able to have a much softer bike, which will absorb the road better, keep the tire on the ground more consistently, and therefore afford me a lot more safety when riding in the rain. Obviously, if you're coming through big puddles, then you're either going to stand up on the pegs, you're going to line the bike up as best you can, and you're going to get really loose on the bars in case the bike does aquaplane and wiggle. The bike will always straighten itself out, and it is a very emotionally challenging situation to get into that when you suddenly come around a corner and there's a big stream of water in the road and you're doing 50 miles an hour. So riding very loose on the bike and letting the bike do its thing is going to be very, very important to you continuing your ride safely. Now, obviously, if it's going to get much wetter, is it worth pulling over and waiting for a while and then getting back on the bike and continuing or finishing your ride? That's up to you. I know if I'm going to be sitting in rain for three or four hours, then I'm going to keep that ride going. I'm going to get through it. I'm going to get to my destination and then I'm going to take all my gear off and get warm. I'm not going to stop and hope it ends when clearly it's not. So I will power through those situations. Not because there's a timetable to meet and something that I have to get to. I just want to be done with the ride in the rain. It's cold. It's miserable. Especially if your gear isn't fully 100% waterproof. And even if it is, over time, rain will drip down your helmet, drip down your neck, and then through your back, and it just gets miserable. So, prepare for your ride if you know you're going to get into some kind of wet weather, or there's a likelihood that you will be getting into wet weather. And prepare thoroughly knowing what you are going to do given the circumstances that you are heading into. Being prepared, being willing to change tire pressure, spring tension and hydraulics will give you a much safer bike and actually a l quite a bit more fun when you're riding in the rain. Dave Moss can tune your suspension no matter where you are on the planet via his remote tuning service. Contact Dave on Facebook or by email, dave at davemosstuning.com.